I've done my best for you. And why? It was my duty. And I am the slave of duty. As a child, I was regularly apprenticed to your band. It was through an error. No matter it was ours, not yours, and I was in honor bound by it. An error? What error? Oh, I may not say. You would reflect upon my well-loved Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> Nay, dear master. My mind has long been gnawed by the cankering tooth of mystery. Better have it out at once. When Frederick was a little lad, he proved so brave and daring. His father thought he'd prentice him to some carby seafaring. I was a lad, his nursery maid, and so it fell to my lot to take and bind the promising boy. Apprentice to a pilot, a life not bad for a hardy lad, though surely not a high lot. Though I'm honest, you might do worse than make your boy a pilot. I was a stupid nursery maid on breakers, always steering. I did not catch the word aright through being hard of hearing. 
mistaking my instructions, which within my brain did gyrate. I took and bound the promising boy, apprentice to a pirate. A sad mistake it was to make and doom him to a vile lot. I bound him to a pirate you instead of to a pilot. I soon found out beyond all doubt the scope of this disaster. But I hadn't the face to return to my place and break it to my master. A nursery maid is not afraid of what you people call work. So I made up my mind to go as a kind of piratical maid of all work. And that is how you find me now, a member of your Shylock, which you wouldn't have to a pilot. Oh, pardon, Frederick, pardon. Right, sweet one, I have long since pardoned you. Those two words were so much alike. <laughs> they were. They still are. The years have rolled over their heads. Tonight my obligation ceases, and tonight I leave you forever. Individually, I love you all with affection unspeakable. Aww. But collectively, I look upon you with a disgust that amounts to absolute detestation. <laughs> oh, pity me, my beloved friends. For once I am out of my indentures, I shall feel myself bound heart and soul to your extermination. Poor lad, poor lad. Well, Frederick, if you conscientiously feel it is your duty to destroy us, we cannot blame you for acting on that conviction. Always act with the dictates of your conscience, my boy, and chance the consequences. Besides, we can offer you but little temptation to remain with us. We don't seem to make piracy pay. I'm sure I don't know why, but we don't. Oh, I know why, but alas, I mustn't say it wouldn't be right. Speak out, I charge thee. Why, it's only 11.30, and you are one of us until the clock strikes 12. True, and until then, you are bound to protect our best interests. Then it is my duty to tell you, as a pirate, that you are all too tender-hearted. For example, you make a point of never attacking a weaker vessel than yourselves. And when you attack a stronger one, you invariably get thrashed. There may be some truth in that. Then again, you make a point of never molesting an orphan. True, but we are orphans ourselves, we know what it is. Yes, but it has gone out. And what are the consequences? Everyone we capture says he's an orphan. <laughs> Alas, three ships proved to be meant entirely by orphans. <laughs> One would think that Great Britain's mercantile navy was recruited solely from her orphan asylums. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which we know is not the case. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> but hey, you know, you wouldn't have had this absolutely merciless. There's my trouble. Until twelve I would, after twelve I wouldn't. Was ever a man placed in so delicate a position? And Ruth, your own Ruth, whom you love so well, who has won her middle-aged way into your boyish heart, what is to become of her? Oh, he will take you with him. Ruth, I feel some little difficulty about you. It is true that I admire you greatly, but I've been constantly at sea since I was eight years old, and yours is the only woman's face I've seen in that time. I think it is a sweet face. It is. Oh, it is. <laughs> I say, I think it is. As I have not had the chance of comparing you with other women, it is quite possible that I may be mistaken. True. <laughs> How terrible it would be if I were to marry this innocent person and find out that she is, on the whole, plain Ruth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, Ruth is very well. She's very well indeed. Yes, there are the remains of a fine woman about you. <laughs> you really?
really think so. I do. Then I will not be so selfish to take her from you. In justice for her and consideration for you, I shall leave her behind. No, 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 Frederick. It must not be. Ah, uh, for we are rough men. Rough! Who lead a rough life. Rough! Rough! But we are not so utterly heartless as to deprive thee of thy love. No, I think I am right in saying here that there is not one who would dare rob thee of this inestimable treasure the whole world holds dear. Not one! No, I thought there wasn't. Keep thy love, Frederick. Keep thy love. You're very good, I'm sure. Well, it's top of the tide and we must be off. When your process of extermination begins, may our deaths be as swift and painless as you can conveniently make them. I will. By the love I have for you, I swear it. Would that you could render this extermination unnecessary by accompanying me to civilization? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, Frederick, it cannot be. I do not think much of our humble profession, but in contrast with respectability, it's comparatively honest. No, my boy, I shall live and die a pirate king. <laughs> Under the brave black flag I fly Then play a sanctimonious part With a pirate head and a pirate heart <laughs> Away to the cheating world go you Where pirates are a well-to-do But all stay true to the song I sing And live and die oh, That is quite enough. <laughs> tell me, Ruth, compared with other women, how are you? I will tell you truthfully, Master. I have a slight cold, but otherwise I'm quite well. <laughs> oh, I am sorry for your cold, but I was rather referring to your personal appearance. Compared with other women, are you beautiful? Oh, I have been told so, dear Master. Um, lately? <laughs> 
Oh, no, years and years ago. <laughs> what do you think of yourself? You know, that's a delicate question to answer, but I think I am a fine woman. That is your candid opinion. Yes, I should be deceiving you if I told you otherwise. Oh, thank you, Ruth. I believe you, for I'm sure that you would not practice upon my inexperience. I wish to do the right thing. And if, I say if, you really are a fine woman, your age shall be no obstacle to our union. <laughs> Hark, I hear voices. Who has ventured to this all but inaccessible land? Could it be the Coast Guard? <laughs> no, it, it doesn't sound like the Coast Guard. Confusion! It is the voices of young girls. If he should see them, I am lost! <laughs> By all that's marvelous, a bevy of beautiful maidens! Lost, lost, lost! <laughs> how lovely, how surpassingly lovely is the plainest of them! What grace, what delicacy, what refinement! And Ruth. Ruth told me she was beautiful. <laughs> oh, false one, you have deceived me. I have deceived you. Yes, deceive me. You told me you were fair as gold. And faster am I not so. And now I see you're plain and old. I'm sure I'm not a job so. Upon my innocence you play. I'm not the one to plot so. Your face is blind, your hair is green. It's gradually got so. Faithless woman to deceive me, I who trusted so. Master, master, do not leave me, here I go. Faithless woman. show myself in this alarming costume. No, no, I must remain in close concealment until I can appear in decent clothing.
whose homely face and bad complexion has caused all hope to disappear from ever winning man's affection to such a one if such there be I swear by heaven's arch above you if you will cast your eyes on Peace. 
am a major general. It is, it is a glorious thing to be a major general. It is a rock for the major general, a rock for the major general. General, I've been mentioned magic to the land and and mineral. I know the kings of England and I quote the fight historical from Marathon to Waterloo and order categorical. I'm very well acquainted too with matters mathematical. I understand equations both the simple and quadratical. The path I know is theorem, I am teeming with a lot of news. With many triple facts about the square of the hypotenuse. I am very good at integral and differential calculus. I knew the scientific names of beings and immaculus. And sort of matters vegetable, animal, and mineral. I am the very model of a modern nature general. <laughs> History, king, not this answer, paradox. I answer hard and cross I've been pretty things but paradox. I quit in elegiacs, all the crimes of video gabalus and conics. I can build peculiarities, palaverous. I can tell and doubt Raphael some gem and on top of these. I know the croaking corners of the frogs of Aristophanes, and I can arm a few of which I've learned the music's dinner for. Dinner for. Dinner for. Dinner for. And whistle all the airs and let it run on the pitiful. Washing bill in Babylonic uniform and tell you every detail of Caractacus' uniform. And short of matters, vegetable, animal, and mineral, I am the very model of a modern major general. <laughs> In fact, when I know what is meant by Mamelon and Rabelin, when I can tell at sight a Mauser rifle from a javelin, when such affairs and sorties and surprises I'm more wary at, and when I know precisely what is meant by commissariat, when I have learned what trophies has been made in modern gunnery, when I know more of tactics than a novice in a nunnery, in short, when I have a smattering of elemental strategy. Strategy, strategy. I know, I've got it. You'll say a better major general is never strategy. 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 Common military knowledge, so I'm plucky and adventury, has only been brought out at the beginning of the century. But still, imagine vegetable, animal, and mineral. I am the very model of a modern major general. <laughs> We are all 
single gentleman. <laughs> well, yes, I gather that. Is there anything else? Nope, nothing else. Don't believe me, Papa. They're pirates. The name is Pirates of Penzance. The Pirates of Penzance? I've often heard of them. Oh, except this gentleman who was a pirate once, but it means to lead a blameless life evermore. Now, wait just a minute. I object to pirates as sons-in-law. Well, we object to major generals as fathers-in-law. But we needn't press that point. We wave it and look over it. <laughs> An idea. And do you mean to say, I said, do you mean to say, that you would rob me of these, the sole remaining props of my old age, and leave me to go about the remainder of my days unfriended, unprotected, and alone? Well, yes, that's the idea. <laughs> now, tell me, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? Oh, dash it all! Here we go again. I ask you, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? Orphan. Yes, orphan. Do you know what it is to be one? I say, orphan. Orphan, orphan, orphan! I, I don't think we quite understand each other. I ask you, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? And you reply, orphan. As I understand, you are merely repeating the word orphan to show that you understand me. I didn't repeat the word orphan. Pardon me, you did indeed. I only repeated it uh, once. <laughs> That's true. But you repeated it. But not often. <laughs> Stop. I think I see where we're getting confused. When you say often, do you mean often, as in a boy has lost his parents, or often, frequently? Ah, oh, I beg thee pardon, I see what we mean. Frequently. Ah, so you said often, frequently. No, only once. <laughs> exactly. You said often, frequently, only once. Okay. 
prose if I hadn't the elegant diction indulged in illicit fiction, which is not in the same category as telling a regular terrible story.
Frederick cannot use the calm excellence of your wisdom and reconcile it with your conscience to relieve something to relieve my father's sorrow? I will try, dear Mabel. But why does he sit here night after night in this drafty old ruin? Why do I sit here? Frederick, to escape from the pilot's clutches, I've described myself as an orphan. And heaven help me, I am no orphan. I have come here to humble myself before the tombs of my ancestors and to implore their pardon for having brought dishonor upon the family escutcheon. But, sir, you only bought this property a year ago. <laughs> the baronial castle is scarcely dry. Frederick, in this chapel are ancestors, you cannot deny that. With the estate I purchased the chapel and its contents. I don't know whose ancestors they were, but I know whose ancestors they are. <laughs> and I shudder to think that their descendants by purchase, if I may so describe myself, would have brought dishonor upon that which I have no doubt was an unstained discussion. Be comforted. Had you not acted as you did, these reckless men would have surely called the nearest clergyman and married your large family on the spot. <laughs> I thank you for your proffered solace, but it is to no avail. I assure you, Frederick, that such is the anguish and remorse I feel at the abominable falsehood by which I escaped these easily deluded pirates, <laughs> that I would go to this simple-minded chief this very night and confess all, did I not fear the consequences would be most disastrous for myself. Tell me, at what time does your expedition march against these scoundrels? At eleven, and before midnight I hope to have atoned for my involuntary association with the pestilent scourges by swiping them from the earth. And then, dear Mabel, you will be mine. Are your devoted followers at hand? They are. They only wait my orders. Then, Frederick, let your escort lie in hearted. Be summoned to receive a general's blessing. Ere they depart upon their dread adventure. Dear sir, they come. and sing ta da ta da For we're threatened with a mute And your heart is in your boots There's nothing brings it round Like the trumpet's martial sound Like the trumpet's martial sound ta da ta da so Thank you. 
on the list that on his press and for reference a lack to our chance of running back. So perhaps it would be wise not to cough or criticize, for it's very evident these intentions are well meant. Very evident these intentions are well meant. Evident, it's well meant. Evident, highest well meant. February 
28 days as a rule are plenty. One year and every four, his day shall be reckoned as nine and twenty. Through some singular coincidence, I shouldn't be surprised if it were owing to the agency of an ill-natured fairy. You are the victim of this clumsy arrangement, having been born on the 29th of February. And so, by a simple arithmetical process, you'll easily discover that though you've lived 21 years, if we go by birthdays, there are only five and a little bit over. <laughs> Dear me, let's see. Yes, yes, with yours, my figures do agree. <laughs> He gaily mocked, though counting in the usual way, years 21 I've been alive. Yet reckoning by my natal day, yet reckoning by my natal day, I am a little boy of five. He is a little boy of five. <laughs> A paradox, a paradox, a most ingenious paradox. The paradox, the curious paradox. The most ingenious paradox. Absurdly whimsical. A little boy of five wouldn't think it to look at me. <laughs> you are glad now. I'll be bound that you spared us. You would have never forgiven yourself when you had discovered that you had killed two of your comrades. Comrades? Oh, I'm afraid you don't appreciate the delicacy of your position, my boy. You were apprenticed to us until my 21st year. No. Until your 21st birthday. <laughs> birthday. <laughs> and going by birthdays, you were as of yet only five and a quarter. <laughs> oh, you're not going to hold me to this, are you? No, 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 no. We merely remind you of the fact and leave the rest to your sense of duty. To your sense of duty. Don't put it on that footing. As I was merciful to you just now, be merciful to me. I implore you not to insist upon the letter of your bond, just as the cup of happiness is at my lips. We insist on nothing. We content ourselves with merely pointing out to you your duty. Your duty. <laughs> uh, well, you have appealed to my sense of duty. My duty's all too clear. I abhor your infamous calling. I shudder at the thought that I have ever been mixed up with it. But duties before all. At any price, I will do my duty. Bravely spoken. Come, you are one of us once more. Lead on, I follow. <gasps> oh, oh, oh. What, what is, is the matter? matter? <laughs> Ought I to tell you? No, I cannot. It isn't right. Speak out, I charge thee in that sense of conscientiousness, in which we have never yet appealed in vain. <laughs> well, General Stanley, the father of my Mabel. Yes, yes. General Stanley escaped you on the plea that he was an orphan. He did. Oh, it breaks my heart to betray the honor father of the girl I adore. But as your apprentice, I have no alternative. It is my duty to tell you that. No, it, it's my duty to tell you that. Well, General Stanley. General Stanley is no orphan. What? What? More than that, he never was one. <laughs> Am I to understand that to save his contemptible life, he dared to prey upon our credulous simplicity? Oh, 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 oh,
revenge shall be swift and terrible. We shall go and collect our band and attack Tremorn Castle this very night. But stay! Not a word, he is doomed. Away, away, my heart's on fire. I burn this place deception to repay. This very day, when men will cry, shall glut itself and go away, away. Away, away, ever I expire. I find my duty more to do today. My heart is filled with anger's fire. It strikes me to the door, away, away. With faults with foul, he tricked us of our pride. Let vengeance how the pirate so decides. Our nature stern, he softened with his lies. And in return, tonight the traitor dies. Yes, yes, tonight the traitor dies. Yes, yes, tonight the traitor dies. Tonight he dies. Yes, so early tomorrow. His girls likewise. They will wander in sorrow. The ones are spot. In their natures they cherish his own work. To abuse it shall perish. Tonight he dies. Yes, so early tomorrow. His girls likewise. They will wander in sorrow. The ones are spot. In their natures they cherish. And all who fought to abuse it shall perish. Away, away, away. Tonight the traitor dies. Away, away, tonight, 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 the traitor dies tonight,
in 1940, I of H shall be, I'll then return and claim you, I declare it. It seems so long. I swear that till then you'll be true to me. behind. Yet when the danger's near, we manage to appear as insensible to fear as anybody here, as anybody here. these pirates alone. It is most distressing to be the agents whereby our erring fellow creatures are so deprived of this liberty which is so dear to us all. But we should have thought about that before we joined the force. <laughs> it's too late now. <laughs> He's not engaged in his employment, or maturing his felonious little plans. His capacity for innocent enjoyment is just as great as any honest man's. Our feelings we with difficulty smother when constabulary duties to be done. I take one consideration with another. A policeman's lot is not a happy one. 
Jumping on his mother, he loves to lie basking in the sun. I'll take one consideration with another. A policeman's lot is not a happy one. Oh, when vocabulary duties to be done, to be done. A policeman's lot is not a happy one. Yes, yes, 
the Major General Kong. Yes, yes, the Major General Kong. Yes, yes, the Major General comes, tormented with the anguish, dread of falsehood on its own. I lay upon my sleepless bed and tossed and turned and groaned. The man who finds his conscience ache, no peace at all enjoys. And as I lay in bed awake, I thought I heard a noise.
telling the truth, he is not able. With this deceit, you worked upon our feelings. Revenge is sweet and favors all our healing. With courage, rare and resolution, manly. For death, prepare on happy general standing. Daughters, all of whom are beauties. 